In this video, we're going to talk about why holding on to the past, even if things were amazing back then, is a dumb idea. So today's question comes from a viewer. He wants to know, yo, Elliot, do you miss the past? Now, this question is directed to me. He's probably wondering, yo, Elliot, what are your thoughts about where you find yourself today as opposed to how good things were maybe 10 years ago when your YouTube channel was popping off and I was a popular creator? So in context of my story and relating it to you as you go through life and have different seasons, some good, some bad, how do you let go of the past? You know, letting go of the past when things are bad is tough. But letting go of the past when things were good may be a bigger challenge if you don't understand the cycles of life as well as what's up ahead for you. Now today I'm going to share a map with you that I learned from a book called The Amazing Development of Men. And it begins like this. In our lives, we start out climbing a hill and then climbing another hill and then climbing a mountain. To begin with, this first hill that we climb when we're children, usually to about the age of 12 or 13, is referred to the stage of a man being a page. P-A-I-G-E, I think it's described, spelled. And so what is a page? A page is someone or a, ch a young man who is being trained to be a warrior. As that phase begins to drop off, usually around the age of 12 or adolescence, we go into being a knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, according to the author of this book. And so if this is, you know, childhood, this is being a teen, right? And so we spend our early years learning about what it takes to be a tough guy, to be a man, how to have integrity, how to have virtue, and then how to take the newly emerging testosterone and energy and strength and physical prowess that a young man has when he becomes a teenager and directing it appropriately. So that when he gets to the point of being maybe a man in his early 20s, up to his about mid 30s, he is well on his warrior path, the war path. Warrior, hopefully I'm spelling these right. So you're on your warrior path. And then you get to the peak where you have that sword and you are a warrior at the top of the mountain. And that becomes the first critical peak that you experience as a man. In many ways, you are at your physical peak. You're probably stronger than you've ever been in your, mid, uh, your late 20s or mid 30s. You probably make more money than you've ever been made. You are probably more attractive to women than you've ever been when you reach this peak of that warrior mountain. And so you probably would never ask this warrior or a man who's achieved peak potential at this point in his life if he misses being a knight or being a page. Because, well, the warrior has more money, he has more muscle, he has more women. Life is better as a top of the mountain warrior. But according to this map, the journey is not done. So we can say this is in your 20s to 30s. And then what happens is an interesting thing. You would imagine that you'd go from page, knight, warrior, and then maybe king or something like that. But that's not the case. After being a warrior, after having that experience, there is what the author describes as a going down into a valley, into a pit, into a dark place that Robert Bly in his book, Iron John, which is an amazing book about the development of men as well, calls catabasis. And when you go into this catabasis, you are essentially going into a tunnel. It's a dark enclosed place where you're not sure what's next, but it's a critical step in order to rise back up and reach king status. Now, after the king status, it's not necessarily smooth sailing, but there's another phase as well. And I'll explain that in a moment. So let's go back to that question. Elliot, do you miss the past? Well, 
if I'm sitting right here, where is where I found myself for quite a few years, I may miss being on the top of the mountain slaying dragons and being that high profile value, high profile, high value, slaying, slashing, killing them kind of guy. But if I take that perspective and stay stuck with that, or you stay stuck with the perspective of what it was like when you were at the top of the mountain, no matter if it's this grand cycle or smaller cycles in your life where, you know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down, then you would absolutely 100% miss the journey back up to a higher peak. And the reason why this peak is higher than that peak, I'll make it look higher, is because you, ca you carry with you up this new mountain, all of the experiences, all of the wisdom, all the things that you learned about yourself and others as you move through these past seasons, but most importantly, when you go down into the catabasis. And so once again, if you find yourself in a catabasis, if you find yourself in a dark place, a tunnel, the abyss, not sure where things are going, unsure about how things will unfold, unsure about the future and you lament about the past, wanting the past again, you are going to miss all of the nourishment that happens when the sun goes down. You know, we could liken this onto summer and then fall and winter. If we had summertime all the time, the planet would burn up, right? There wouldn't be that refreshment. There wouldn't be that, uh, the, the sterile, soil that allows the ground to rest so that there could be fruitfulness in the next season of the year or the next season of your life. You will miss going back down that mountain, that hill that you were at the top and retrieving parts of your page and your night that you had to leave behind because they just weren't strong enough, smart enough, charismatic enough, or confident enough to make it up the mountain. But, you know, this is a journey of climbing mountains. We're also talking about the journey of life. If there are parts of you that are split off and cast into the shadow, meaning you pretend like they're not there, right? A lot of guys, I remember like when I was making videos with guys that did pickup, one of the things that they would do is that they would pretend to be a charismatic guy, smiling and being cool in front of girls, but the fact is they were splitting off a low confident chode version of themselves that doesn't go away. <laughs> he doesn't go away, he just gets stuffed down. And then later at some point in the relationship while you're, you know, once you meet the girl and you're being charismatic and, and confident, uh, but weeks or months or years go by later and that inner chode, that inner weakling, that page, that split off part of yourself that's in the shadow starts to emerge and your new girlfriend wonders, what's up with this guy? He's not what he looks like he was being. He's being something completely different. That's the part of you that you cast off and try to pretend like that's not there. That is ultimately going to manifest itself at some point in your life once again. He's gonna show up. But when he shows up, while you're at the peak of that mountain, his forces are that much more destructive. When your inner weakness, your inner beta male, your inner child comes to the surface while you're at the, having a peak experience of life, at life, it almost feels like everything is crumbling down around you. But fear not, my friend. You are simply at being asked to climb down off of your high horse, which you tend to think is the highest peak that you could ever reach, but only so that you can retrieve what has been lost and climb back up a higher mountain, a mountain associated with wisdom. You see, the difference between a warrior and a king is that a warrior oftentimes behaves like a hero. He does the things he wants to do for self-aggrandization. He just wants to look awesome. He wants to get that girl. He wants to make that money. He's going after it. He's crushing it and he's killing it. And he's being everything that the world has told him he should be. But then something hits you and you start to, now let me back up for a moment. Something literally can hit you or something can rise within you. 
In Iron John, Robert Bly often talks about how a catabasis often is a takedown. Like for me, it was tearing both biceps and my Achilles tendon. Physical injuries. Pop my bubble, burst my bubble, wounded me. But he also says that every wound is a womb. Every wound is an opening to the psyche so that something else could come in and be birthed through you. That injury or that wound could simply be a hankering feeling, a bad feeling, just a hunch that you're, you've climbed to the top of the wall, you put your ladder to the top of the wall, you got to the top of the wall, looked over and realized, oh, my ladder was on the wrong wall. I got to the top, but this is not really where I wanna be. I personally had a sense of that also. No matter how popular I was on YouTube and how many people loved me and everywhere I went, went people wanna take pictures, something inside me was like, Elliot, you're faking it. This is not really you. There's more to you than this, but the world might not find it as popular and pleasing as your yo Elliot self. So given the psychological wounding of that inner beta male that wanted to be confronted so that his problems could be explained and resolved, as well as the physical injuries associated with popping my biceps, turn, tearing my Achilles tendon, or for you, it could be a divorce. It could be a car accident. It could be a sickness. It could be bankruptcy. It could be a myriad of different things that come to you from the outside. Or like I said, rises from inside a depression, an anxiety, a sense of unwellness, unrelaxed, right? And as that arises, if you have the courage, you can choose to climb down or you'll be chopped down to size. Now, the warrior who does all these things for surface reasons has to confront the truth about himself, himself and the things he wants in life. And then when he decides to muster up the strength and climb them out again in order to achieve his crown, the difference between a immature warrior, which most of us are in many ways, and a true king is that the king does his thing for other people, not himself. The king is truly a servant. That's what a king is. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. There is no such thing as a king without a sacrifice. The king's nature is sacrificial. He gives up himself. He gives up the ego warrior, the warrior ego. He gives up the lower self, though shining for the world, for a higher self that elevates him from the inside, that gives him a sense of dignity and grace. And so... Do I lament about the past? No. Sometimes I watch my old videos and I marvel at the creative capacity of that dude to spit from his hip and give good answers. Kind of like this clip. Still got it. Maybe I need some practice. Still there, same guy. But never do I say I want to go back because this has been a very valuable journey. This has allowed me to see parts of myself I couldn't see before and retrieve wounded parts of myself so that he could be patched up, sent out, and rise that mountain full, with full support from every part of myself or yourself. Now I get it that I'm a little bit older than a lot of you guys watching this video, so I don't assume that too many of you know what this part looks like. Many of you are still trying to climb this mountain. I appreciate that. And Although I don't want to discourage you, that's not the point at all, I want you to be aware. I just want you to be conscious of the fact that no matter how good things get, some of you guys, you, you achieve this even earlier than in your mid-20s. I know guys in their early 20s that have achieved, it, achieved this. And they get to the top of the mountain and they do something crazy like run off to a commune, right? They, they just give it all up because it's like, oh boy, what's it all worth? That is sort of like a catabasis, allowing yourself to go down. So if you're a young man, you're watching this, and you're like, oh, Elliot, that ain't me. I ain't no old warrior. I ain't no king. I'm not on my way up from a catabasis. Just be aware of where you might be on this journey and keep your eyes open, being vigilant, always aware for that stumbling block that might send you down into the valley. 
Now, I mentioned that there's one more stage that's higher than the king, and that's called the elder. And so as I personally rise up out of my catabasis and I'm climbing for that king mountain, not there yet, I'd say I'm probably somewhere like over here, right? Once I get there and life starts to go on, my hair will really, really start falling out. My muscles will really begin to recede. My pee pee will stop working, right? Just like you, all of us start getting frail and old. The tendency would be, especially if you're immature, to say, oh, I wish I was in my king days once again. But now you're an elder. And the elder is like the king on steroids. The difference being that the outward power that is wielded by the warrior and the king steals inward and grows. It's cultivated in his soul. And it gives the elder the type of wisdom to keep his mouth shut, watching always, and being there to give a little advice, a little guidance, a little support, and a whole lot of love to those wild kings and immature warriors who are still battling it out in this world. So I hope that helps. Dude, done.